using all the gold, putting everything. Yeah. This is a good fish. Hey, right, a bit about the gear I'm using. I'm using the Surinoyer DF50 here. I'm using that for a couple of reasons. It's a budget reel. I don't want to really try an expensive reel in the salt water yet until I get a lot more experience with cleaning them when fishing and using them for BFS and salt water. It's got a carbon body on it, a lot of plastic on it as well, but that isn't going to corrode, is it? So when I get home, I'm going to spray off the spool, spray in the line, uh, guide there these are areas I need to pay particular attention to a little bit around here and around any screws um, and then I'll probably take the end plate off and just wipe around inside um, I've got ceramic bearings in there so there's not a lot I can do with them I don't want to put oil in them I could put one drop possibly um, that's probably going to be my downfall I think the ceramic bearings might somehow rust or part of them rust uh, I could do with seal bearings or stainless steel bearings probably be better I, I guess give me your thoughts um, so yeah, I'm going to something I'm going to get into in the future is servicing these reels, taking them apart, and oiling the bearings, the drag, the lot. So you will learn that as I go along. I've sent off for a kit to do it now. Um, yeah, it's a great little reel. I've got some new braid on it today. I've got some Majorcraft Dangan 0.6 PE, 14 pound actually on there with a 10 pound leather. So we're not quite LRFing. We're getting there. Uh, we're more BFSing the heavier end of BFS. And I've got this paired up with a Kain Teton TTC 662L, six foot six inch, two to ten grams, three to eight pounds. Well, that'll be monofilament they're talking about, which is thicker than braid. So I'm getting the strength to diameter with the braid and I'm getting the abrasion resistance of the fluorocarbon leather. I've got a nice long leather, which I've tied on with a, um, an FG knot, which is very neat um, and should help it go through the rod rings because I want a longer leather so that I can hand line the odd smaller fish in here. So we'll put on some isome, give it a go, see what happens. So if you can see, I'm keeping my isome in its liquid in this tub. And it's a sealable tub. You can see the lid there. It's, uh, it's got a plastic seal around it. It's never leaked. I've even lost one of the corners on here, one of the tabs. Uh, it's great. And you can put different colors of those in and they don't seem to leach into each other, or at least not the ones I've got. And I'm just using the open hook. So it's a little drop shock hook that I, uh, a seamer, um, size six, I think it is. It could even be smaller than that. I will put it on the screen for you. Just threading the worm up. I wasn't losing a lot of gear last time and I was cooking more fish and smaller fish as well. More smaller fish on the, uh, the open hook. I still got a little Texas weight and this time I found a little bead to add to it as well. It's a plastic bead. I prefer um, a glass bead. It clanks differently. But this is a little five gram tungsten uh, weight. You can see it's colored there. It's a, it's a green color with spots on it. Lovely little leads. They're from 97 Tungsten. Uh, you can find them online. I'll put links in the description of the video anyway. So it's new braid. Um, I'm going to start the brakes up. Uh, setting the reel up. Uh, I've got yeah, quite a fast drop on that. It's light leads I'm using after all. Little or no side to side play. And the idea is I should just be able to flick this off the end of the rod and out around the structure here. There we go. And it's just going out. I can flick it from the left maybe to get closer to the structure, we can do all of that. And I'm thumbing it a lot. And all I'm doing is just tapping it up and down like I do normally when I'm ras fishing. We'll probably, uh, there we go. We don't need to go far. I've got the brakes on four and a half at the minute. I'll take them down to four. But we are fishing into a, almost a headwind. Whether that will affect the fishing, I don't know. Oh, there's a fight, yeah. Got a good rass on here, I think. Using all the rod, pulling everything. Yeah. This is a good fish. Oh, you can see the bend in that rod. And it's right on the rod tip. It's not a bad, that's a good rass for the, for BFS. I can get him in the net. He's come right in tight, that should be easier lock the net out we've got control of the fish it's the the net i'm struggling with there he's in the net so whoo bang straight off got a ball and ras a little bit bigger than the ones we had the other day i'd say that uh, that fish is hooked square in the, the lip there as you can see we'll just put it down here in front of us 
he's a gnarly fish for his uh, his size. He's about a pound or so. Which uh, is a good fish, but it, it coped with it. I got the drag set too loose on the uh, the rod, mine. Um, let's stop. Right, let's put him back. So I uh, had the drag set a bit loose there. I had to put the thumb on the uh, the rod and use the whole of the rod. You see how much it bent to get that fish up and under control. Uh, silly mistake, but there we go. I ain't the first person to have done that, but we got the fish in anyway. Um, when they go on about thumb control with your spool, <laughs> it's not just for your casting some days. But that's a good little balan rasa. There he goes. Blends beautifully into the uh, the weed and everything here. Yeah? I'm just getting a little aqua gear pocket in out here. Or you can still get hold of these. And um, I'm going to go with a nice little light jig out. But I don't think I'm going to use that lure because it's a bit big. I'm going to try one of those little yellow uh, shads there. Take this off. I actually caught pikes a seven pound on these things. Drop shotting in the canal. My local canal. What I'm hoping for is some sort of big pout or shad or something like that. So a nice little short bait. I've even taken the head off there. I want to get the bait round the right way. And just it on take it out and it sat just like that perfect little miniature bait I'm just going to tie that direct because I still haven't found any clips that I trust I'm looking for really strong clips that I can put on the end of my line when doing this um, but I want them to be small and I want them to be easy to use and I just haven't found them yet Get my foot stance again. Good solid stance. And uh, hopefully, if I get the reel set right for the lure, we'll um, hit a pollock or something. So I've changed lure now, and it's obviously a lot smaller, less weight. It's not five grams, probably more like three. I will weigh these when I get home and show you. So I've got to adjust the reel again now. Let's see what it drops like. Very slow. So I'm going to need to loosen that off, or I'm not going to cast that well. So I normally just take the brakes down to zero, get the sort of drop I want. There we go, it's a decent drop. I don't want it birdieing up as it hits the water. It's not, we'll try that. If not, we'll loosen off more. And I'll put the brakes up, let's say the three and a half, and take it from there. Yeah, it's still pulling to the left, so uh, We'll probably just take a click or two off the end tension until it doesn't. And we're fishing this up in the water. We can do sink and draw, we can do all sorts once we've got it set up. Getting there now, it's flying truer, but I still feel I've got too much brakes. So we'll take the brakes down to three. So if we want to do sink and draw, you can lift your old tip like this. Or you can just wind and stop and let it fall, or wind and stop and let it fall. And it'll fall towards you on the drop. There's a fish, just had a go at that. So my betting is that's a little pollock, just had a go at that. On a little sink and draw, I'm still pulling to the left, so I need to loosen the reel off some more. But yeah, so we were just winding then and letting it drop. Winding and dropping. We're trying to sort out, search out a different species. And uh, let's see what happens. Might be able to see the lure there going up and down basically like that. And I'm still running too uh, tight on the reel. Alright, see what the drop's like. Yeah, it's still a slow drop. Got loads of side to side play. Don't want that much. Let's drop the brakes. Right down. That's better. But then I did bird's nest, so. <laughs> Probably too uh, low on the brakes. I'll put the brakes up to two. And it's just experimenting. I've got a lot of side to side play there. 
but it's a very light lure I'll have to weigh it and ooh. Well, we won't know. It looked more like a goldfish, actually. As it dropped off, I was going to net that one. I'm going to go back to the Texas rig in a minute. And cast into areas we were hitting fish the other day. The wind is right in my face, which doesn't help. Then we're going back to the Texas rig. Put the eco gear on it. Oh, there's a fish. Nice sized fish, whatever it is. It's, oh, that's a good fish, that is. This feels like a decent ballot. I'm using the hole, yeah, it's a good ballot. Let's see if we can't keep him on. Another good ballot, but we have more control there with the tight drag. No, my net's too long. You see how I leaned into the hole of the hole of the rod and everything there. Then it's time to trust your gear. And there he is. Let's get the net folded. Yeah, nice size ball on that. About similar to the last one, maybe a tad bigger. Let's turn it around and get sorted. <laughs> Oh, beautiful ball in there. Just over a pound, probably. Really thought. Bent the rod double. But the rod did it, and the drag didn't slip either. So, uh, good little look at him. Here we go. Okay. There he goes. Love the teton. And I really like um, the dark wolf with the heavier weights. You know, sort of. You get up four gram or so, and or above three gram, and it, it fishes well. Struggles once you start getting towards three gram. Above that, it's okay on a three gram Texas rig. It's quite good. Let's fish slower. Oh, just my feet. Fish gone. Not able to skip cast it under the dock either. Here's a bite. Oh, I missed it. Don't know what it was. Tapped it once, come back and pulled it. Let's leave it, see if someone else has a go. So a bite. Let's see what the bait's like. If it comes back quickly, then just redo your bait because then I smashed it. Something at last had a go. They were quite aggressive the other day, though, they were really almost hooking themselves. That's still sinking. Got a lot of dots there. Yeah, hit the deck now. fish then. Just the weight sinking a bit more. Come on fish. What are you doing? I was even getting pollock slam it wide in it in the other day. <sighs> that was weed, not a pollock. Rigging it. Weedless Texas style. But I'm not actually exposing it. I'm leaving the hook point 
this hook point on this one just sits down if you can see that it goes down so I'm just trusting it instead of uh, digging it into the bait that it will uh, protect it a bit like that go on fish I'm sure it's definitely in the deck double more fish pipe or pollock or two make new video There's a bite. Oh, I missed it. Oh, what it is. I'm going to leave the hook point exposed this time. The risk of losing it. Something out there. All of a sudden, we're getting bites every chuck. Fishing down hard on the deck. Could still be wrasse of some description. Goby, something like that, having a whack at it, not hooking itself. This braid is very sensitive, this braid is very good. And then it's sink right out. Oh, it's on the deck. Let's leave it a second, see if anything's interested. That was a tap then, I think. There's a bite. Yeah, got some it. What have we got? It don't feel too bad as size. It's a pout, I think. It's a small pout. There we go. That's what was doing the damage out there. Left the hook exposed. 